In this video, we will discuss mathematical modeling of differential equations with drive and motion with damping. So, you know that the differential equation of free damped motion can be written as m d square x dt square equals to minus kx minus beta dx dt. Here, beta is the damping force. There is no external force. When there will be an external force, function of t, then we can write the equation m d square x dt square equals to minus kx minus beta dx dt plus function of, of t that is external force. So now, this equation becomes a non-homogeneous equation. We already know how to solve non-homogeneous equation using undetermined coefficient methods or variational of parameters methods. So now I will show you one example. Let us consider one example. So this is an example. Here you can see a 16 pound weight is a spring 8 by 3 feet. Initially the weight starts from the rest 2 feet below. The equilibrium position and the subsequent motion take place in a medium that offers a damping force numerically equal to half the instantaneous velocity. Find the equation of motion if the weight is driven by an external force equal to function of t is equal to tan cos 3t. So we have to find out what is given and what we should find. You can see here we have given 16 that is w means weight you can see our spring length is 8 by 3 feet and also beta or c is given half that means half times we have to find the equation of motion here the external force is given function of t equals to tan cos 3 theta so we know that w equals to kx here we put the value for w and s to get the k so we get the k equal to 6 similarly say we know that w equal to mz here g is equals to 32 m is equals to we have to find w is given so we get m equal to a half also given c equals to half that means beta also can be considered as a half because here i write as c in our book it is written as beta so now we find the initial condition you can see here the initial condition x0 equals to 2 because you can see the initially the weight start from the rest 2 feet below when it is below that means x is positive so x prime 0 equals to 0 so i hope you know how to find the initial conditions so we also know that the equation of the equation of motion for the driving force is m d square x dt square plus c dx dt plus kx is equal to function of t is equal to given tan cos dt. Now we put the value for m, we put the value for c, we put the value for k. So when we put the value for m, c, k the given equation of motion becomes half d square x dt square plus half dx dt plus 6x equals to 10 cos dt. So this equation is not in a standard form. We make it a standard form by multiplying 2. So then so we get d square x dt square plus dx dt plus half x. 12x is equal to 20 cos 3d. So now this equation is a standard form. We can solve this equation. We know this is a non-homogeneous equation, second order. So we know that the solution for non-homogeneous equation is equal to complementary solution plus particular solution. So first we find the complementary solution for this equation. So xc is complementary solution to find the complementary solution we write the auxiliary equation so here the auxiliary equation is m a square plus 
m plus 12. Here m means dx dt, so m square means g square x dt square. So when we solve this equation, we get m equals to minus 1 plus minus i root over 47 divided by 2. So you, we use here the formula to find the quadratic, to solve the quadratic equation look like x equals to minus b plus minus root over b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. So we use this formula to find the m. So now we know that we have two roots, but these two roots are complex. Here, this is a complex root. Here, alpha is equals to here alpha is equals to minus half and beta is equals to root over 47 by 2 because this is a complex road. So then we can write the solutions for the complex roads look like e power alpha t c1 cos beta t plus c2 sine beta t. We use this formula to get this solution. Next, we will find the particular solutions. To get the particular solution, first we have to choose our function of t. So you can see in the equation 1, our function of t is 20 cos 3t. So here I choose 20 cos 3t. So you have to remember that the given we have given function of t, then we have to make it capital function of t, that means new function to make it standard form function of t divided by m. So this is 20 cos 3t. So now we consider this one look like a catechometric function. We consider here a cos 3t plus b sin 3t. So now we find the first derivative. We get minus 3a sin 3t plus 3b cos 3t. When we differentiate this one again with respect to t, we get minus 9a cos 3t minus 9b sin 3t. Because we know that derivative of cos x is minus sin x. That's why there is a minus sign. Now we put all these values in our equation number 1. This is our equation number 1. We put all these x p, x prime p, x double prime p into this equation. When we put this, we get this one. We get all this. So now we equate the like times from both sides. So you can see here in the right hand side we have 20 cos 3t. That means we we will equate the coefficients of cos 3t. So when we equate the coefficient of cos 3t, we get this. Similarly, when we equate the coefficient of sin 3t, because there is in the right hand side, there is no sin 3t, that means the coefficient is zero. That's why we consider from the left hand side, the coefficient of sin 3t is equals to zero. Now we solve this one. We get here 3b equal to 3a, that means we get b equal to a. So we put this b equal to a here, then we get 6a equal to 20, that means we get a equal to 20 by 6 means 10 by 3. So our a equals to b equals to 10 by 3. Now we put this value here in the x p in this equation. So when we put this value in this equation, we get our particular solution. So finally we know that our general solution is equals to complementary solution plus particular solution. So we put the value of complementary solution, we put the value of particular solution. This is our obtained answer.